Hello. Let's talk about salt and light. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus makes a declaration. He says, You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. He says that as a straightforward statement of fact. This is your spiritual identity. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Now, your response may be, well, I don't feel like I'm the salt of the earth and I don't look like I'm the light of the world. What are you talking about? But this is based upon what Jesus has just said before that in the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are nine statements of blessing. And Jesus is telling how God has blessed you without you having merited it or earned it. God has blessed you. For example, he says, blessed are you who are poor in your spirit. Are you poor in spirit? Are you unholy and unhealthy? Are you beggarly as you stand before the judgment seat of God? Yes, of course. We're not foolish enough to be arrogant in that place. We have nothing with which to commend ourselves. We are beggars. And to us who are sinful and poor in spirit, Jesus says, you are blessed. The kingdom of heaven belongs to you. And are you uh, hungry, starving to be righteous before God, all the time recognizing that you still think and speak and act like a sinner, a selfish one? Yes, of course we recognize that. To, to us who are hungering for righteousness, Jesus says, you are blessed. What you desire, what you hunger to be, God will satisfy. So as a result of these blessings that God has given to you, Jesus now says there is, um, there is a consequence, there's an outcome, and that is your spiritual identity. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And as you begin to think about that, mull it over, I want to read to you a verse from the Book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 15. And Isaiah writes this, Truly thou art a God who hides himself, O God of Israel, Savior. Ours is a God who hides himself. Well, why does he do that? Because if we were to see God unmasked, unveiled, if we were to see him in his fullness, he would kill us. He's just too glorious. He's just too holy. Holy is a word that not only means uh, absolute purity, it also means distance or separation. God is holy. He is completely other. He is other than we are. He thinks differently. He acts differently. He is different from us. But he still wants to communicate himself to us. He wants us to know who he is. And so in order to do that, because he can't demonstrate himself or unveil himself before our eyes, he, he comes to us in the opposites. He communicates himself, himself in what Luther calls the paradoxes. For example, God who is eternal, he is above all time communicates, shares himself, shares his attributes with an infant born in Bethlehem, laying in a cow feeder. That's just crazy, isn't it? Eternal God becomes an infant born in time. Or God, who is all-powerful, for whom nothing is impossible, hides himself in a humiliated, bloody, crucified criminal on a cross. God hides himself in places we would never expect. He, he acts, he works in the paradoxes. For example, God kills death by using death and by becoming dead. God destroys sin by using sin and becoming sin. 
So today we're going to talk about the God who hides himself, especially who hides himself in the opposites, the paradoxes. And the, the theological term for God sharing his attributes is he communicates his attributes, or as Luther calls it, communicatio idiomatum. God communicates his attributes first and most clearly by the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit over the Virgin Mary, who gives birth to the God-man, the man who is fully God. The fullness of the Godhead dwells in him, we read in Colossians chapter 2. This Jesus, both human and divine, reconciles the world to God and is the atoning sacrifice to save us all from our sin. And we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. God communicates himself, shares himself with flesh and becomes for us Savior. Another way that God communicates his attributes is when the Word of God speaks regarding the elements of bread and wine. And when they become for us the promise of the Word of God, the true body and blood of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of our sin, and for the gift of salvation and eternal life. Because as you remember from the Catechism, the one who has forgiveness of sin has salvation and eternal life. God communicates himself by hiding himself in bread and wine, the true body and blood of Christ. But the, the most mind-twisting of, of the examples of how God communicates himself, communicates his attributes, is that God communicates himself to you. God shares himself with you. The word of God comes to you. God himself comes and creates faith in you. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of Christ. God creates faith in you. And God baptizes you. Having, having taken water and joined his word to it, he places you into it and you are killed in a death like Christ. You are raised to a new life in Jesus Christ. You are Christed. God has now hidden himself in you. He's communicated his attributes to you. Now you despise sin, though you continue periodically to do that, which is abhorrent to you. But you don't want to. You want to live out the faith that God has placed in your heart because faith acts because God has hidden himself in you. Oh, sure, you can reject him. You can say, I want nothing to do with you, Jesus Christ. I don't want your love. You can say that. Don't want your mercy. Don't want your grace. Don't want your gifts. Don't want you hiding in me. But if you don't say that, beloved, then what he has said has already happened. And he has spoken the truth. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world, because the word of God, Jesus Christ, has said it, and what he says happens. It's true. God has hidden himself in you. And so wherever you go, you can be salt. Salt purifies and salt preserves. And God will use you to purify and to preserve. And wherever you go, you are the light of the world. God will use you to scatter darkness and falsehood and evil. God will use you to be light of the world. Now, I'm not saying that you'll do these things perfectly, but you will do them purposefully. You will try to do these things because God has already hidden himself in you. And that's the point that I think the scripture is making today. You, salt and light, the Lord Jesus lives within you. 
He has already hidden himself in you.